Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video we're looking at the Orion Giant View 25 by 100s. Well, this is our biggest binocular that we sell. It features 100 millimeter lenses to suck in a lot of light, and 25 magnification, so you have a nice high magnification for a pair of binoculars. This is excellent for scanning the night sky, looking at star clusters, nebulae, some brighter galaxies. It sucks in a lot of light. Uh, not only that, but you can use it for long distance uh, terrestrial surveillance as well. It has long eye relief, so works with or without glasses. You can just fold the eye cups down. Features a two and a half degree field of view, and the lenses are fully multi-coated, which means most of the light is going through to your eye rather than being reflected back out. So it really helps with the brightness. It comes with a tripod pier socket here. These are just over 10 pounds, so they are quite heavy. You do need uh, a fairly large tripod that's designed to hold at least 10 pounds. It also comes with a nice hard shelled case to protect them when you transport them. Again, the Orion Giant View 25 by 100s. Thank you very much. Clear skies. Hello, I'm Ken with Orion, and these are the Resolux 15 by 70 millimeter astro binoculars. Not just astro, but you can use these for long distance terrestrial viewing as well. But they're some of my favorites for astronomy because they pull in a lot of light. They've, they've got a 70 millimeter objective on the front here. Very good coatings on the lenses, so they're not just because they're 70 millimeters, but the coatings help give this a very bright image. Uh, a 4.4 degree field of view is very wide considering the, the 15 power magnification. They're also very rugged and fully waterproof. Uh, these are military spec binoculars, so they're, they're more rugged than your average binocular. And the collimation is actually held to the what's called the JT2 spec, which is an even more accurate collimation than your average pair of binoculars might be uh, aligned to. For astronomy, a 15 by 70 binocular is excellent for panning the Milky Way, looking at the larger star clusters and brighter nebula. Uh, on the moon, uh, you'd be able to see the larger craters and mountain ranges and definitely be able to see the moons around Jupiter. So, like I said, some of my favorite astro binoculars, the 15 by 70 Resolux. Hello, I'm Michael Bakich, Senior Editor and Photo Editor for Astronomy Magazine. Welcome to Product Showcase. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to four new products that will help you observe Comet Ison. First two are binoculars, and they're called Celestron's Cometron binoculars. This one is their 7x50 model. The numbers mean that the binoculars have a magnification of 7 and that each of the front lenses is 50 millimeters in diameter. So that's a 2 inch front lens on each side. So when you look through the binoculars, everything appears 7 times closer. Binoculars are great for observing comets and these binoculars are really good because they have a wide field of view, almost 7 degrees. So when you look through them, you'll probably be able to see the head of the comet, the bright surrounding of the head, the halo or coma, and a good deal of the tail. Now, if the tail gets really long, you'll have to pan the binoculars along it, but that's kind of fun to do also. So these binoculars, 7 by 50 with a field of view almost 7 degrees wide. The other binoculars from Celestron are there 12 by 70. So 12 is the magnification of these binoculars, and 70 is the diameter of the front lens, almost three inches across. Because the front lenses are bigger, they collect more light, and the comet will appear brighter to you. Now, the magnification does cut down the field of view some, 
but there's still a 4.6 degree field of view through these binoculars. So when you look through them, you're going to get a great view of Comet Ison, star clusters, the moon, and lots of other celestial events. Plus, binoculars are great because when you're not using them to look at the sky, you can look at things on Earth. The Cometron 7x50 binoculars weigh about 27 ounces, really light. The 12x70 aren't much heavier at about 3 pounds, but if you're out observing and holding the binoculars up for any extended period of time, whether you're standing or sitting, these binoculars can tend to feel a little heavy. I mean, imagine holding your arms like this for five minutes straight. So, with these binoculars, Celestron has included this accessory. So what you do is you simply screw off this uh, cap in the binocular, and you would screw this tripod adapter in just like that. One of the cool things about this adapter is that the screw is attached. It can't fall out. So once you have screwed this into the binoculars, it's quite easy to do. You can mount these on a tripod and then that's what bears the weight. And then you can point them toward the comet or toward any other object in the sky and they'll just stay there until you move them the next time and you're free to look through them for as long as you like and you're not holding your arms up, you're not holding the binoculars up. Really good idea for Celestron to include these. The first new telescope I want to introduce you to is Celestron's Cometron First Scope 76. And as the name indicates, this would be a great first telescope for a family or a child who's never looked at the skies before. As you can see, the telescope is uh, a tabletop model. Okay, so you can set it up on a table outside in your backyard or a picnic table, or if you have to, the hood of a car. It's very light, very easy to move around, and it has two motions. It has the back and forth motion that astronomers call azimuth, and it has the up and down motion that astronomers call altitude, so it's an alt-azimuth mount. This telescope comes with two eyepieces, a 20 millimeter, okay, which goes in there and you tighten it up. This particular eyepiece gives a magnification of 15, more than the binoculars, so it still gives a nice wide field of view. The other eyepiece is a 10 millimeter, and it gives a magnification of 30. Now, th with a uh, magnification that high, 30 may not sound like that high, but it is if you're moving the telescope across the sky. A magnification of 30 will let you kind of zero in on different parts of the comet. So if you want to look at the comet's head, you would point it there. And if you want to scan along the comet's tail to see if it has two tails, as astronomers predict, how the tails connect, how they uh, separate, you can use higher power by using the 10 millimeter eyepiece. The telescope itself has a three inch mirror at the bottom of the tube, so it's a reflecting type of telescope. The three inch mirror, or 76 millimeter mirror, collects much more light than your eye. So celestial objects are going to appear quite bright. So not just comet Ison, which is predicted to be bright, but other fainter comets would look good through this scope. The telescope also comes with a nice low power finder scope. So once you align the finder scope and the telescope, you do that during the daytime, it's quite easy. Uh, point them both to a distant street light and make sure both are looking in the same place. In the nighttime, then you look through the low powered finder, center the object you want to look at through the telescope, and voila, it will be there. Finally, because all human eyes are different, plus some of us wear eyeglasses, Celestron includes a rack and pinion focuser with quite a bit of travel so that everybody, whether or not you use eyeglasses, can use this telescope to view Comet Ison. The fourth and final product in this video is Celestron's Cometron 114 AZ. 114 refers to the diameter of the mirror that sits in the back of the tube, 114 millimeters or four and a half inches. 
A four and a half inch telescope collects a lot of light, and this telescope will help you see the various parts of the comet quite well. Celestron includes with this telescope a red dot finder, which is really easy to use. You just click it into place, and then you turn it on, and it projects a virtual dot onto the uh, screen here. And you just point that to wherever you want to look in the sky, and you'll be able to uh, center in on the comet or any other object. This telescope, like the first scope, has a rack and pinion focuser. But because it's a larger telescope and because its focal length, the distance from the mirror to the point where the light focuses is longer, you get a bit more magnification with the same eyepieces in this telescope. So when you insert the 20 millimeter eyepiece, you get a magnification of 22 and a half. Then when you insert the 10 millimeter eyepiece, that magnification doubles to 45. You want to take some close up looks at craters on the moon or the belts of Jupiter or the rings of Saturn, that's the eyepiece you want to use. Great eyepiece for those, uh, those objects. Plus, a great eyepiece for studying the comet in detail, close up. If you want a little bit wider view, you put the 20 millimeter eyepiece back in, the magnification drops a little bit, and you'll have a great view of Comet Ison, the comet that we hope will be the comet of the century. If you're interested in buying one of these products, links to all the products mentioned in this video are in the description down below. If you like and found this video helpful, don't forget to give a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching.